Starfish is radially symmetrical and pentamerous. The pentamerous nature is due to the presence of uh, five arms radiating from the central disc. So generally a starfish as you can see in the diagram is uh, having a central pentamerous disc having five arms. This is the starfish. These arms are also known as the rays and generally they are five. Most of the time they are five but there are uh, certain starfish like the so solar star which has 7 to 14 arms and more than 40 arms in halister. The size is generally 10 to 20 centimeter in diameter but they can be bigger or smaller than this. Their color varies from being uh, yellow to brown to purple or orange. The body has two surfaces. One is known as the upper surface uh, which is convex and is known as the aboral surface or the abactinate, abactinal surface. Similarly, we have a lower surface which is, uh, which is uh, flat, it is known as the oral surface or in comparison to abactinal, it is known as the actinal surface. Interestingly, the oral and aboral surfaces are not the dorsal and the ventral but correspond to the left and right side of the bilaterally symmetrical larva. During the development, it has a, a bilaterally symmetrical larva. The left side of the larva develops into the oral surface and the right side develops into the aboral surface. The axis occupied by the arms are known as the radii. So there are five radii and the space in between these radii on the central disc is known as the inter radii. So we have a, a radii and inter radii. As you can see a well defined head is absent. The oral surface has certain features which differentiate it from the aboral surface. So the oral surface is the side of body which is which in natural condition remains towards the substratum and contains the mouth or this is the mouth and which contains the oral opening. This surface is known as the oral surface. The oral surface bears certain structures. One is the, as I told you, the mouth. It is present in the center of the pentagonal disc. So this is a pentagonal disc and the mouth is present in the center of the disc. And it is also known as the actinosome. So it has the actinosome or the mouth on the oral surface which always remains toward the substratum. The mouth is surrounded by soft and delicate membrane which is known as the peristomial membrane or peristome. Peri means around peristome. It is also guarded by the oral spine or the mouth papillae. Second is the ambulacral groove. From each angle of the mouth radiates a, a narrow groove known as the ambulacral groove. These are the ambulacral grooves. which runs along the middle of oral surface in each arm. So these are the ambulacral groove, this is also an ambulacral groove and this is also an ambulacral groove. Each groove contains four rows of locomotory organs. So each groove 
as as four rows of of locomotory organs which also act as a food capturing organ respiratory sensory organ and these are known as the tube feet the tube feet are soft thin tubular retractile structure provided with a terminal disc or the suckers the sucker function as a cup to afford a firm attachment on the surface to which they are applied so this is a groove ambulacral groove it has a sucker here which attach themselves to the substratum similarly we have a uh, ambulacral spine like the two feet ambulacral spine each ambulacral groove is bordered and obviously guarded by the two or three rows of spine these are the spines on both side these spines are calcareous and and are movable and are capable of closing or covering the groove near the mouth suppose here lies the mouth these spines become longer stouter and assembles in five group one at each interradii of the disc and are known as the mouth papilla outside these spines are there are three rows of immovable spines outside these movable spines we have another row three rows of immovable spines beyond which there occurs a series of marginal spines which demarcate oral from the aboral surface so we have a ambulacral groove the tube fit the movable spines the immovable spines and the marginal spines so along the ambulacral group uh, groove we have a tube fit a row of tube fit the movable spine on on the on both sides then we have immovable spines and then we have the marginal spines which are also immovable sense organs include five unpaired terminal tentacles so as the name indicates terminal tentacles that the, they are not too large are present on the tip of each of the arm they are unpaired and similarly the five eye spots which are at the base of the tentacle these are non non retractile and hollow projections it act as a tactile or olfactory organ the tentacle act as the olfactory organ and uh, the the eye spot is photosensitive and made up of several ocelli so it it is photosensitive in case of aboral surface the side of the body which remain upward or towards the upper surface which is convex is known as the aboral surface or abdominal surface it has anus which is circular and situated close to the center suppose this is the anus and a, a important organ known as the madreporite the madreporite is at the aboral surface on the central disc it is flat subcircular and asymmetrical and it is present between the base of two arms the presence of madreporite makes the animal bilaterally symmetrical madreporite is marked by a number of radiating narrow straight wavy grooves and act as a sieve it is attached to the water vascular system below it which we will discuss in the water vascular system the arms in between which it is present is known as the bivium these two arms in this case are will be collectively called a bivium and the remaining three are known as the trivium entire aboral surface is covered with numerous short blunt stout calcareous spines these are also known as the tubercles the spines are variable in size and arranged in irregular rows 
running parallel to the long axis of the arms. These spines attach are attached in the with the dermal ossicles. In between these spines are present the gills or the papillae. The starfish respires through the papillae or the gills. Papillae or the gills are, are the small projections through the minute dermal pores. These are tubular, conical and thin walled and are known as the dermal branchia or the gill or the papula. Their lumen remains continuous with the silome. They have respiratory as well as the excretory function. So suppose this is the uh, skin or the outer part of the outer layer of the body wall and these are the say spines which we have discussed here the spines or the tubercles the dermal branchia or the papillae arises like this these are the small tubular structures in between the spines similarly another structure is known as a pedicillate cover the entire surface of the body these are modified spines and like the uh, tiny pincers or the jaws they are movable spine like structure it consists of a long stalk so this is the uh, stalk the pedicillate are present along with the spines and the papillae on the surface and these are of two types one is the straight type this is the straight type and other is the crossed type so these are like the uh, uh, forcep and cross type and straight like differs in the functioning both have three calcareous plates two are known as the jaws or the valves and the third is the basal plate so these are the jaws this is also a jaw this is the basal plate and these are the muscles these are muscles associated with the closing or opening of the of the jaws these are the for closing muscles and these are for the opening and these are again for opening this is the epidermis so in case of straight type when the when when they close the jaws the jaws remain parallel to each other and meet throughout their length so it's a closed jaw and they they remain parallel to each other it's like the and this is the basal plate and these are the jaws in case of cross type the jaws cross each other and this is the basal plate which is also articulated the muscle responsible for closing the jaw is known as the adductor muscles and for opening they are known as the abductor muscles these are present all over the surface and they help in the protection of the animal they have both offensive and defensive functions they they protect the gills the general they keep the general body surface clean by cleaning the debris and uh, organisms which settle on them like the sponges or cylinders digestive system of starfish the digestive system of starfish comprises the alimentary canal and digestive glands the alimentary canal is tubular straight short and extend vertically along the oral aboral surface it starts with the terminal mouth it is the anterior most aperture of the canal and it is situated in the center of peristomial membrane on the oral side it is provided with the sphincter muscles and is capable of great expansion and retraction it leads into the small esophagus so in the diagram we, we are unable to see the mouth because it is the diagram from the aboral side where you can see the anus and the cardiac and the pyloric stomach but not the mouth and the esophagus the esophagus is very short it leads into the stomach stomach is divided into two parts 
and it fills the greater cavity of the central disc. One part which is towards the mouth is known as the cardiac stomach. This is written wrong here. It is the cardiac stomach. And other is the pyloric stomach. The cardiac stomach has muscular highly folded wall which bulges out into the five lobes. So cardiac stomach has five lobes. The interesting part is the cardiac stomach can be everted out. It, it comes out of the mouth by the contraction of the body muscles and the retraction is brought about by the five retractor muscles. The pyloric stomach on the other hand is much smaller, flat and a small pentagonal sac. Uh, this is the pyloric stomach and it communicates with the intestine. Intestine is again short, narrow and five-sided tube that runs straight upward to open out at the anus. It gives off hollow diverticula called the rectal or the intestinal cica. The intestinal cica are considered as the excretory organ as the secret down fluid. Last part is the anus. The intestine opens on the aboral surface by a aperture known as the anus. It is situated somewhat eccentrically on the aboral side of the starfish. So the digestive system consists of the, the mouth, the small esophagus, stomach which is divided into two parts, the cardiac which is strong, muscular and can be overted out and the small pyloric, the small intestine having intestinal cica and last part is the anus. Talking about the digestive glands to the pyloric stomach are attached 10 long brownish or greenish glandular appendages called pyloric cica. So these are the pyloric cica. One, two, three, four. Similarly, in each arm, we have two pyloric cica. So in total, we have 10 pyloric cica attached to the pyloric stomach. They are also known as the branchial cica or the hepatic cica. Each pyloric cica consists of double series of hollow lobated sacs that open into the central duct. The two ducts of each arm join to form the common pyloric duct that opens into the pyloric stomach. Pyloric cica are composed of four types of cells. One are the flagellated current producing cells. These, have, these are having the flagella and maintain a steady circulation of fluid and digested food in the cavities of the cica. Other are the mucus cells. They produce mucus. Third are the secretory cells. They secrete the digestive enzymes or digestive enzymes to convert proteins into peptones or starch into the monosaccharides or the fats into fatty acid and glycerol. And last is the storage cells which are responsible Storage cells are responsible for storage of reserve food in the form of lipids, glycogen, polysaccharides, protein, etc. Basically, the pyloric cica function as the pancreas of the vertebrates. Starfish has a very interesting physiology of digestion. As the fish is, as a starfish, sorry, not the fish, as a star, the starfish is a carnivorous animal. It, may, it feeds on worms, crustaceans, snails, bivalves, other small sized echinoderms, and other small sized fishes. For ingestion and digestion, they evolve their stomach the cardiac one. on the prey and wrap it around there and wrap the stomach around the prey. The digestive juices of in, in present in the cardiac stomach digest the animal or the prey and then the cardiac stomach is pulled back inside the body along with the food. In case of bivalves, the starfish uses two of its arms to pull off the, uh, the shell of the bivalve and evolved the cardiac 
stomach along with juices in between the two shells thereby digesting the animal or the prey and then pulling back the cardiac stomach to take the food the undigested food is either ingested out directly from the mouth or passes through the digestive system and ingested out of the anus next to the water vascular system of the starfish the water vascular system is modified part of xylem and it consists of system of three water filled with the certain capsules and the water vascular system plays an important part in the locomotion of the animal and it consists of different parts like the madreporite stone canal ring canal radial canal and the lateral canals along with the tube feet so starting with the madreporite madreporite is present on the aboral surface eccentrically on one side it is provided with many grooves and pores if we see the transverse section here is the transverse section of the madreporite this is the surface okay it has definite pores it has numerous pores and the canals beneath the pores so the water goes from the pore inside the pore canals and then into the collecting canals before going into the ampulla ampulla leads into the long stone canal or uh, this is the stone canal so all the, the water is come uh, going down from the pores into the pore canals and the collecting canals into the ampulla and then into the stone canal the stone canal this is the uh, transverse section of the stone canal the stone canal is somewhat the stone canal is like this having a lumen and the and a, and a ridge and it is enclosed by the sheath of axial sinus which we will discuss in the circulatory system stone canal leads into the ring canal it is a pentagonal structure at the interradii of the each arm and it bears the tidesman body there are two tidesman body in each of the uh, side of the ring canal so making it a total of nine because one position is occupied by the opening of the stone canal the tidesman body are supposed to be the lymphatic organ of the starfish ring canal leads into the radial canal in each arm so this is the ring canal so radial canal this is the radial canal so this is the radial canal it there is a there is one radial canal in each of the arms so in total there are five radial canals the radial canals are connected with the lateral canal these are the lateral canals these are the lateral canals which connects the radial canal with the tube feet as discussed earlier tube feet are the uh, structure having an ampulla a podium and a sucker ampulla is the uppermost part the middle part is a podium and the lower uh, disc like is a sucker the tube feet are the main uh, locomotory and the respiratory organ of the starfish so talking about the locomotion because of the absence of head the starfish can move in any direction according to its desire or the requirement it can move horizontal as well as on the vertical surfaces the locomotion is carried by alternating contraction and relaxation of the ampulla so this is the ampulla and this is the podium and last part is the sucker initially the podium uh, ampulla contracts thereby pushing the water towards the sucker and elongating the podia the sucker now attaches itself to the substratum podium contracts and and the ampulla is again relaxed thereby moving the animal forward this is how the two feet helps in the locomotion of the starfish next is the circulatory system of the starfish there is no definite a tube blood vascular system in the starfish however the system which is responsible for circulation of digested food to various body organs is often termed as a circulatory system it includes two parts or two systems one is the perihemal system and other is the hemal system as the name indicates perihemal system is something which is around 
the 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 other hemal system so the perihemal system consists of different parts before going into those parts let, let me tell you about the diagram this is the aboral side and this is the oral side of the starfish and these are the uh, this this is the madreporite which leads into the ampulla and the stone canal this is stone canal so starting with the perihemal system first part is known as the axial sinus axial sinus is a thin walled tubular cavity enclosing the stone canal so it encloses the stone canal from all sides it also encloses a gland known as the axial gland together the axial sinus axial gland and the stone canal are known as the axial complex second part is the aboral ring sinus as the name indicates it is situated at the aboral side it is tubular pentagonal channel around the intestine this is the aboral perihemal ring sinus and it communicates with the axial sinus it gives off as you can see it is giving off two genital hemal strand in each arm thereby constituting the genital sinus the aboral ring sinus it gives off five pair of genital branches in each arm now this is the position of the arm the genital sinuses which encloses the gonads fourth is the oral ring sinus if we came down towards the oral side we have a circular ring like structure the oral peribuccal perihemal or hyponeural ring sinus so it is commonly known as the oral or the hyponeural ring sinus which runs around the mouth it is tubular sinus and is divided into inner narrow part and the outer wide part by oblique septum known as the hemal strand so the circular part here is the hemal strand which divides the oral ring sinus into two rings the narrow inner ring and the wider outer ring four fifth are the radial perihemal sinus as the name indicates these are present in the arms the radial hemal perihemal canals or the sinus it is present in between the radial water canal and the radial nerve which we will discuss later on so it gives off five radial perihemal sinuses in each of the arm last is the peribranchial sinus as the name indicate it is present as a circular space around the basal part of the gills or the papillae so the perihemal system is a system of the spaces which is derived from the phloem and is present in the form of the axial sinus around the stone canal aboral ring sinus on the aboral side genital sinus around the gonads oral ring sinus around the mouth radial perihemal sinuses in the arms and the peribranchial sinus beneath the gills similarly we have the hemal system hemal system or the blood lacunar system is very much reduced and is open type like that of arthropods or mollusk etc it includes inter communicating spaces having no coelomic epithelium it is filled with the coelomic fluid containing coelomocytes and is enclosed in perihemal system so hemal system is enclosed inside the the perihemal system and it has a different parts the first is the oral hemal ring as the name suggests it is a circular hemal sinus located around the mouth so it is present suppose is the mouth this is a red color is a radial hemal sorry radial ring oral so it is the oral hemal ring it is a fine channel of the uh, lacunar tissue which runs in the septum which divides the oral hyponeural ring sinus into into two parts so that the, the strand with the this strand which divides the oral ring sinus has inside it the oral hemal ring now the oral hemal ring also gives off the radial hemal sinuses or the strands in each arm the radial hemal sinuses this radish one radial hemal sinuses third is the axial complex as i told you earlier axial complex is made up of the stone canal 
the axial gland and the axial sinus. Now the main part is the axial gland. This is the principal part of the hemal system. The axial gland is elongated, say it is elongated in the oral aboral direction. It is covered externally by the silomic epithelium and it is also called the heart or the ovoid gland or the dorsal organ or the septal organ or the brown gland. It is connected with both the uh, oral and the aboral sinuses and it has in it a dorsal sac at the aboral end. It is also known as the head process, terminal head process of the axial gland. The head process is situated below the madreporite near the ampulla but it has no connection with the ampulla. A pair of gastric tufts, so these are the gastric tufts, arise from the axial gland and are, and are inserted into the cardiac stomach. Digested food from the stomach passes into the hemal circulation through these gastric tufts. So these gastric tufts are very important as it connects the digestive system with the circulatory system. The fluid in the hemal system circulates due to the constant beating of the terminal head process. Last is the aboral, hinge, uh, aboral hemal ring. Aboral hemal ring is a pentagonal ring beneath the aboral surface and it gives off genital hemal strand in each of the to each of the gonads. Hemal system consists of a oral ring, a radial hemal ring in each of the arm, axial complex, the axial gland, the major part and the aboral hemal ring. Hemal ring. So, what are the different functions of the circulatory system? It helps in the distribution of food. Secondly, the axial gland acts as a, a genital stolon, producing sex cells which reach the gonads through the aboral hemal ring and its branches. Main function is the distribution of food of the circulatory system. Next is the respiratory and the excretory system of the starfish. The respiratory as well as excretory systems are not very well developed. The respiratory organs of the starfish consist of the gills or the papillae as we know them, dermal branchi or the papillae. This is the magnified part of the skin of the uh, starfish. Uh, these are the pedicillary, uh, this is the spine and we have a thin walled dermal papillae or dermal branchi or the gills on it. The gills are the chief respiratory organs along with uh, some other organs like the uh, tube feet which are in constant touch with the environment and are responsible for exchange of gases. So gills are simple transparent hollow of growth of the body wall on the aboral surface and these are derived from the silom and their lumen remain in direct contact with the silom. An exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place between the sea water and the body fluid of the gill. An exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place between water, the sea water and the body fluid. The cilia of the epithelial cells have vital role in a movement of silomic fluid and in creating a respiratory water current in the sea water. Similarly, it has it doesn't have any well-defined excretory system. The nitrogenous metabolic waste usually contain the ammonium compound and they pass from various tissue into the silomic fluid and from there they diffuse through the thin walled rectal ceca. Rectal ceca as I studied earlier is a thin walled uh, structure organ present on the side of the rectum. So the nitrogenous waste diffuses out from the rectal ceca. They also diffuse out the, the nitrogenous waste also diffuses out from the tube feet as well as the gills. Silomocytes have a significant role in excretion of excretory waste from the silom. Next is the nervous system of the starfish. The nervous system of starfish is very simple and of primitive type and it is closely connected with the epidermis except the visceral nerve plexus which is situated in the gut wall. The nervous system of starfish consists of four parts. One is known as the superficial or ectoneural nervous system. Second is deep or hyponeural nervous system. Third is the aboral or silomic nervous system and fourth is the visceral which is present in the gut wall. So starting with the superficial nervous system, this system includes the main part of the nervous system and constitutes the central nervous system. It is further, it further consists of the circumoral ring. 
The circum oral ring is a pentagonal structure and runs around the mouth. So this is the nerve ring which is circum oral and supplies fiber to the peristome and the esophagus. Second are the radial nerves. The radial nerve cord arises from the angle of the uh, nerve ring, circum oral nerve ring, and runs in the middle of each arm. They appear V-shaped in close section and ends in sensory cushion at the base of tentacle of its arm. They supply nerves to the two feet and the ampullae. So whereas they supply to the mouth and the esophagus, radial nerve supply to the two feet and ampullae. Third is the subepidermal plexus. Subepidermal plexus is in the form of network of nerves throughout the body. They concentrate to form a pair of adradial nerve one running along each margin of the ambulacral groove. So they are, they are present in a pair on each side of the ambulacral groove. So suppose this is the arm from the oral side and this is the ambulacral groove. So these nerve fibers, the subepidermal plexus, they are the network of nerve fibers which concentrate on each side of the ambulacral groove. And another nerve plexus concentrate into the two feet. The ectodermal or the superficial nervous system consists of both motor and the sensory nerves. Second is the deep or hyponeural nervous system. It does from the mesoderm. It includes a double circum oral ring situated on the oral side just above the ectoneural nerve ring. So it is, it is present here as a double ring and it gives off double radial nerve in each arm. These are known as the Langer's nerve. So it gives off double nerve ring in each arm and it is a motor in nature. Third is the aboral. It is present on the aboral side and it forms a nerve ring around the anus and several lateral nerves in the arms. And fourth one is the visceral nervous system which is located in the wall of the gut. It consists of well-defined nerve plexus which is connected with visceral receptors and it is sensory in function. The next is the sensory organs. The sensory organs of starfish are very primitive and consists of neurosensory cells, terminal tentacle and the eyes. The terminal tentacles have sensory cells which are tactile. These are the terminal tentacles at the end of each arm. These are sensory and are tactile and they are sensitive to food and other chemical stimuli also. So what are the terminal tentacles? Second are the important eyes. The eyes are obviously the most significant sensory organ in the starfish. They are present on the oral surface at the base of each terminal tentacle. There occurs an optic cushion which consists of an thickened epidermis and numerous eye spots. The eye spots are also known as the ocellus or pigmented cup ocelli. Each ocellus is cup shaped and is covered by a cuticle beneath which is found in many species or lens. So this is the cross section of the eye spot. It has a cuticle outside, a lens which is present in many species and the wall of the cup is made up of numerous pigmented cells and the uh, uh, retinal cells. Each retinal cell is bulb shaped from the anterior side and has a long fiber below. A transparent gelatinous tissue fills the cavity of the ocellus. The ocelli are light perceiving organs which can detect the change in light intensity. Third are the neurosensory cells. Neurosensory cells are present in the, the entire body surface of the starfish and they serve as both tango receptor which are uh, sensitive to the pressure and the chemo receptor. They have the simple structure having a cylinder body containing the nucleus and a distal thread like process similar to this a cylinder body and a thread like process reaching to the cuticle and a proximal fiber entering the subneural nerve plexus. They are especially numerous in the sucker of the podia at the base of the spine and pedicillar and at the terminal tentacles. The reproductive system. Most of the estrias are, or the starfish are unisexual or dioecious, that is sexes are separate except a few 
which are hermaphrodite and there is no sexual dimorphism however during breeding season some sort of color difference may occur between the two sexes the organs are of primitive types and consist of only gonads the male gonads are called testes and the female gonads are ovaries each sexually mature male or female contain five pair of the gonads a pair in each arm between the pyloric cecum and the ampullae the testes or ovaries are morphologically similar each gonad appears as elongated feathery structure or like a bunch of grapes the proximal end of each gonad is attached to the aboral body wall near the interbrachial septum between the two arms by a short gonoduct which opens laterally through a small gonopore the mature sperm or ova are discharged by the male and female in the sea water the release of sex cells from the gonads is regulated by neurohormonal secretion of radial nerves talking about life history and development of of starfish a fertilization is external the mature gametes are shed freely in the surrounding sea water for external fertilization female shed approximately 2.5 million eggs and the male produces approximately same number of sperms the zygote contain a very little yolk and it is said to be the a micro lacetal development is indirect the fertilized eggs undergo rapid equal and intermediate cleavage which leads into the development of spherical blastula the small spherical blastula soon has a cavity known as a blastocoel it's a free living form and can lead it's a free living form the mouth is not formed in this and it cannot feed soon the gastrulation happens where a invag- blastula invaginate to form a double layer gastrula the invagination is known as the archanteron or the primitive gut the blastopore so formed develops later into the anus the endoderm forms two lateral pouches which pinch off as left and right coelomic pouches development starts with the blastula then a three layer gastrula which develops the coelom and now it is a, a larva the larval development is the larval development consists of different type of larva known as the dipyro larva bipinaria and the brachiolaria the bipinaria larva is small and it has and in anterior mid ventral ectodermal invagination known as a mouth the blastopore has become the anus and the archanteron has differentiated into esophagus stomach and intestine the uniform ciliation of gastrula is replaced in dipyra by perioral band around the mouth and aboral band inside the mouth the aboral band inside the mouth helps in the feeding and the perioral band helps in the swimming The second larva is the bipinaria larva. It develops from the uh, dipyro larva. It develops a free oral lobe. It develops a free oral arm, a dorsal lateral arm, dorsal median arm, ventral median arm. Mouth has already been present. A post oral arm, posterior lateral arm. It swims freely on the surface of water. It has a straight alimentary canal with mouth at the anterior end and anus at the posterior end. it develops into the brachial area larva the brachial larva larva has a pre or arm anterior dorsal arm and the branchial arms it also has adhesive disc with which it attaches itself to a substratum for further development it is also a bilateral symmetrical larva and swims and feed like the bipinaria on the diatoms bipinaria larva undergoes metamorphosis after 6 to 7 weeks as the larva fixes itself with the adhesive discs it changes its orientation the mouth represent the oral side and the anus represent the aboral side five arm rudiments appear on the arm rudiment and radial canal grow into them skeletal elements also develop in each arm two pair of outgrowths from the coelom in each lobe serve for the attachment by further complex reorganization bilateral symmetrical larva is transformed into radially symmetrical starfish the baby starfish is approximately 1 mm in diameter and without and with short stubby arms another very important character of starfish is the regeneration and autotomy 
with an arm or a part of the or a part thereof is lost it is usually regenerative it has been observed that even the one fifth of the central disc remain attached to the arm it is able to regenerate the rest of the body when an arm is injured the animal cast off the arm this process is known as the autotomy in comparison to the regeneration the autotomy helps in the protection of the animal when it is caught by one or more arm the arm is usually cast off near the base the dropped arm may be regenerated autotomy serve as a mean of protection to the animal so this is all about the starfish thank you